Clifford Lee Brown was born and raised in Suffolk, Virginia on December 25, 1945. At the age of 19, I was drafted by the United States Army, but elected to enlist with the United States Marine Corps September 9, 1966. My initial training took me to Paris Island, South Carolina for basic training. From there, I traveled to Camp Pendleton, California, where I received my occupational specialist in the field of wire communications for maintenance and installation of telephones, switchboards, and other hosts of electrical work. From March 1967 to April 1968, I served one year tour in Vietnam where many great men have long served before me. In Vietnam, we were constantly and always on the move. I saw some good bad days, but most of the days, good days, were outweighed the bad days. I returned to the United States from Vietnam in April of 1968 as my primary duty station, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. I was deployed in July of 1968 to Mediterranean Sea area with the battalion land team, 3rd Battalion, 2nd Marine, where this unit demonstrated and performed real-time war simulation and readiness for combat. This was one of the most phenomenal and greatest experience of service as a Marine. During the Mediterranean experience and tour, I had the opportunity to travel to, to a few places. Greece, Turkey, and Spain. When I returned back to the States in December of 1968, I was assigned to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. On May 9, 1969, I received some very bad news. My beloved brother, George Arthur Brown, Private First Class, was killed in Vietnam. I took it hard and still to this day. I live with the fact that my little brother at the young age of 19 didn't return home from Vietnam. One of the proudest and most respectable and notable days in my life was when Sergeant Clifford L. Brown went to Delaware Air Force Base to welcome and accommodate and the comet my little brother and the comet my little brother George Brown private first class the proud soldier back home to the United States for his final resting place in I say thank you, George, for your sacrifice and your service. On September 9, 1969, I, Clifford L. Brown, Sergeant, was honorably discharged from the United States Marine Corps after serving three proud years. 
submitted by Clifford L. The Cooper Brown. family military background. This is a short synopsis of our military family history or the family business as captured and summarized by my son, Daryl R. Cooper. From left to right, my father, Marine Lance Corporal Marcellus Cooper Sr., served in World War II as a member of the first colored Marine unit on the island of Peleliu. Once captured, this island served as a staging area for the historic Battle of Iwo Jima. Second from the left, Captain Marcellus Cooper Jr., United States Army, served in the Republic of Vietnam, the 17th Aviation Group, as a combat intelligence officer. Third from the left is my son, Sergeant Darrell R. Cooper. He served in Iraq as a 3rd Armored Division tank commander who commanded the lead tank into Baghdad Airport. To sum this all up, my son calls us the good, the bad, the ugly. We proudly served our country when called upon. This was our family duty, our family business, honor, sacrifice. All gave some, all gave some. Remember, freedom ain't free. Mrs. Edith Dawson was in the Army during World War II. She served from April 1943 to March 1946. She was 22 years old when she entered the U.S. Army. Highlights of her military service were her assignment in the 404 Army Service Band as a snare drummer and the 6888 Central Postal Directory Battalion. As a member of this battalion, she sailed aboard the L de France to Europe and served in Birmingham, England, and Paris, France. Her battalion undertook the mammoth task of fording mail to an estimated 7 million United States service members in European theater of operations. The battalion's motto was no mail, low morale. And this was a very meaningful because the mail from friends and family was a key to morale booster for the troops. Life in Paris was unforgettable experience, she says. This battalion was the first black female soldier stationed in Europe during World War II. According to an article in the Afro-American, they were deployed to clear out years of backlog mail. The battalion did the dirty work to ensure mail was delivered to the troops, government workers, and Red Cross workers who were stationed throughout Europe, an important element to the war effort then and now. In February of this year, the members of this battalion were awarded the Congressional Gold Medal for their exceptional service to the war effort. Sincerely, Mrs. Edith Dawson. Major General Robert Gaskill Sr., retired, was in the Army for 29 years. He went to Howard University and earned his undergraduate degree in business administration in 1952. While in college, he began his military career in the Reserve Officers Training Corps. Shortly after graduation, he became second lieutenant in the U.S. Army Reserve. He earned a graduate degree at George Washington University and was promoted to first lieutenant in 1954. During his military career, he used his business administration skills in procurement of missiles, equipment, and company supplies and commissary supplies. He served in Korea, Vietnam, and Germany. He took advantage of the studies of the United States Army Command and General Staff College, Leavenworth, Kansas, the Armed Services Staff College, Norfolk, Virginia, and the Army War College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. His accomplishments are recognized in the 42nd edition to Who's Who in America from 1982 to 1983 after serving as Director of Human Relations Studies and the Director of Human and Interpersonal Group Relations at the War College, he was named to the command of Brigadier General of the 21st Support Command. In 1977, he was promoted to Major General and retired in 1981. My name is Louis Thomas G. I volunteer at the age of 17 to enlist in the United States Air Force. I had just graduated from high school and my parents had to sign for me to join. My basic training was in Lacking Air Force Base. Next I reported to Wichita, Texas Technical School at Shepherd Air Force Base. Joining the Air Force was the best decision of my life because I did not prepare myself for college. I was training to be an aircraft engine mechanic. I worked on reciprocating engines. There, 
these are the engines with propellers. Later I reported to Ellis Air Force Base in Fairbanks, Alaska. I was Alaska. Alaska was a strange place and to live it because it's a stream cold. You had to learn to know how to survive there. For example, you couldn't touch a metal door handle without your hand, with your bare hands. They would stick to the me cold metal. Ice fog is another danger. Ice fog is produced early morning and at night. The ice fog is moisture that crystallizes in the air and become ice crystal floating in the air. There is a there these crystals could damage your lungs. You couldn't run outside because breathing too much of these ice crystals would freeze right in your lungs. Cause fuss right in your lungs. Special clothes were called Arctic gear were issued to protect your body. I got to see the latest aircraft because Ellison Air Base had a long running for aircraft tested. There were performances in that cold climate. The U-2 spy planes was stationed there. <coughs> A team of workers required special clearance. The Russians did not did shoot down one of these planes and the pilot was held for two years. The Air Force made a man out of me. It taught me responsibility. It taught me to accept responsibility and stay on task until the job was completed. My job taught me to respect people and work with my supervisors. I enjoyed service immensely. I enjoyed the service of my country and I got to visit many places in the world. I would have joined I would join the Air Force again if I had to. Thomas Crawford Hargrove, senior father of Monica Hargrove and grandfather of Stephen Paul Roy, was born March twentieth, nineteen twenty one in Banks County, Georgia, to Conyers Lincoln and Blanche Mintz Hargrove. He was the third of six children and was the firstborn son of that family. After graduating from high school at the United Baptist Church Institute in North Georgia in 1941, Mr. Hargrove was drafted into the U.S. Army and served during World War II. He began his service at Fort Benning in Columbus, Georgia, where he was shipped to Fort McClellan in Anniston, Alabama. He was later sent to Parrish, Texas, then to San Francisco, California, from there which he sailed to Australia. He served in New Guinea in the Philippines. He rose to the rank of sergeant and was honorably discharged in 1946. Following his return to Georgia, Mr. Hargrove matriculated at Morehouse College in Atlanta, where he majored in business administration and minored in psychology. He met and married Barry D. Joe Fordson in August 1952. They had two children, Monica Renee and Ernest Jr. They lived in Atlanta, Georgia, raised their family there. Mr. Hargrove subsequently attained a master's degree in art at the education from Atlanta University in 1974. He served as the assistant principal and taught in public schools throughout Georgia for over 30 years. He retired in 1988 while was serving as a teacher at the Hendricks Drive Elementary School in Clayton County, Georgia. He relocated to Alexandria, Virginia with his daughter Monica and grandson Stephen in 1999 following his late wife suffering two brain strokes. And relocated to Woodbine Healthcare Rehabilitation Center in Alexandria. He joined the Lomax African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, where he became an active member of the senior ministry and teacher of the adult Sunday school class. 
He was called home to the Lord on October 15, 2008. Dennis Humphrey began his military journey at, in San Francisco, California and the Naval Training Center. After one year of service as a system company commander, he went to school to serve as a ship's serviceman. Later, he served on the USS Hitwit DD-966. Approximately a year later, he was elected selected to enter the computer service field as a Navy tactic data systems technician. He served two additional years on the USS Enterprise CV-62 aircraft carrier. After leaving the Independence, Dennis served as a master instructor at Mara Island Base in California. After separating from the active duty in the Navy, Dennis completed a 14 years as a communication specialist signal officer with the Joint Forces, U.S. D.C. Army and U.S. Air Force National Guard. Dennis retired from service April 9, 2007, as a warrant officer, CW2, with 22 years of service. Yours truly, Dennis. Randy T. Moore, Sergeant, United States Air Force. I was drafted in January 1967. Rather than entering the U.S. Army or Marine Corps, I enlisted in the United States Air Force. I was filled with numerous unknowns. I had never been away from home nor on my own, and I was required to care for myself, but military service helped me to mature quickly. I flew from Baltimore, Maryland to San Antonio, Texas. This was my first time on an airplane, then to the Air Force Induction Center at Lackland Air Force Base. I was housed in a barracks with 59 strangers and taught through basic training how to operate as a unit. After eight and a half weeks of basic training, I graduated and was promoted to the grade of Airman Third Class. I was flown to Shepard Air Force Base in Wichita Falls, Texas. There I was trained in a specialty military unit. After 16 weeks of training, I graduated and reciprocating aircraft mechanic with the grade of Airman Second Class. I came home in June 1967 on leave before going to my first permanent assignment at George Air Force Base, California. The 479th Tactical Fighter Wing, 831 Combat Support Group, Base Flight. I worked on several aircraft and had the opportunity to flew as an air crew member. I left this assignment in January 1969 to Jungle Survival School at Fort Chaff Lee, Louisiana. Um, my next assignment was in Southeast Asia, Nakhon Phanom, a secret air base on the Thailand-Cambodian border. I flew on air crew for helicopters and the A-26A aircraft for 12 months. I left Southeast Asia in February 1970 for my final assignment at the Air Force Flight Test Center, Edwards Air Force Base, California. I was assigned to base support and worked on several aircraft and assignments. I was also promoted to sergeant and was discharged in January 1971. The military was a great experience for me and truly added in making me the man who I am today. Sincerely, Ernie T. Moore. My name is Stephen Dwight Murray. I enlisted in the United States Army in December 1965 at the age of 19. To avoid being drafted into the Navy or the Marines, because they were swinging and swaying with Class 1A, I enlisted because I cannot swim and I do not want be able, could not be able to drink all the water in the ocean. I went to basic training at Fort Jackson, South Carolina for 10 weeks. A completion of it, I went to Aberdeen Proving Grounds for my advanced individual training. 
with a 10 week course in ordnance supply. In the, t in the fifth week of class, they told us that we were going to Vietnam. We completed the course and one June 1966, I arrived in Vietnam, Saigon. It was a, a very hot night. At night, it was a temperature it was like 90 degrees. And we just came from Fort Dix, New Jersey. And it was like 40 degrees. And we were wearing field jackets. And it was so hot when we got there. It's very hot and humid in Vietnam. And even at night. I completed the, the tour and my mother prayed for me every day while I was gone. I was, was reassigned to Fort Knox, Kentucky where I stayed for 18 months. On completion of the 18 months I was discharged, honorably discharged in December of 1968. I moved to Pennsylvania, my home of record, and took a job as a drill press operator in Alice Chalmers factory. And we uh, made core barrels, which were uh, parts of nuclear power plants being the youngest drill press operator there. I learned to be able to function with other people from the Army. Then I went to, I have several other tours in, in several states. I was an instructor at Fort Lee for, for nine years. I was a, a property manager clerk for one year at Fort Gordon, Georgia, and three years at Fort Polk, Louisiana, I was the S-4 operations. And I spent four years in Germany. Four years in Germany, I was the Um, Permissance and uh, a Schaffenberg where I completed our units to who hadn't passed in a, a, an inspection in five years I cleared it up so that they passed the first time in five years. I also set up an, a warehouse in a Schaffenberg and completed a hundred percent inventory where they were having warehouse denials every day before when I first got there. In Korea I put in a new warehousing layout according to the DOD uh, standards. In Japan, I was the uh, Equal Opportunity Advisor, where I learned about different events such as Black History Month, Asian Pacific Heritage, Women's History, Hispanic History, and Native Americans. I was in charge of these events. I, I had a, a schedule foods at the mess hall for special events and I also scheduled luncheons for each event. I did the general's message for each event and most of these things I learned on my own because there was very little help from the committee except to give me ideas of what to do for each one. I got in contact with a young man who 
was an illustrator. Leslie Ray Pincham Jr. served in the Navy for one tour of duty. He served in Keflavik, Iceland in San Diego, California. Ray says, I'm very proud of my military service and would not change the experience for anything. I was stationed in Keflavik, Iceland in San Diego, California. I was an interior communications electrician, IC seaman, and I was able to travel the world and meet many different kinds of people. During my time, I was challenged intellectually and physically, which helped broaden my experience of the world and of my own life. Thank you again, Leslie Ray Pinchum Jr. Brian Rowe graduated from Wakefield High School in 1973 and decided to follow the path of his father and two older brothers. Upon enlisting in the United States Army in 1974, he completed his basic and advanced individual training at Fort Polk, Louisiana. The remaining time until 1976, he was spent in Friedberg, Germany, working with the small artillery. Veteran status enabled him to gain employment at Giant Foods for five years. He then went to the United States Postal Service, from which he retired after 38 years. The military instilled a sense of punctuality, responsibility, and dedication to career and family. Sincerely, Brian Elroy Rowe. Rowe. I was drafted into the United States Army in February of 1969. My basic training was at Fort Benning, Georgia, and my advanced individualist specialist training was at Fort Polk, Louisiana. I received an honorable discharge in September 1970. During my service of duty, I received medals, accommodations, and decorations. The following article was in the Northern Virginia Sun newspaper in 1970. That article reads, Bronze Star to E.G. Rowe. Army Specialist for Elroy G. Rowe, 20, son of Mr. and Mrs. Milton I. Rowe of 3011 South 17th Road, Arlington, Virginia. Recently received the Bronze Star Medal in Vietnam. Specialist Rowe was presented the award for meritorious service in connection with military operations against hostile forces in Vietnam while assigned as a rifleman in C Company. 1st Battalion, 327th Infantry, 1st Brigade of the 101st Airborne Division, Air Mobile. Sincerely, Elroy Rowe. Milton Rowe Sr. Milton Rowe Sr. enlisted in the United States Coast Guard during World War II and served on the USS Portocolo. He was honorably discharged and held positions within the Department of Army Military Personnel Center at the Pentagon and became a supervisor, receiving numerous recognitions and accommodations for his outstanding work ethic and job achievements. He retired after 37 years. He was a member of the American Legion, Dory Miller Post 194, Arlington, and held Sergeant at Arms Office.